Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our second interview with Egon from Briards from Motorhorn Asset Management. It was a little painful for us to get it done, but now I'm sure it will be a very good one. Egon, welcome. I have, uh, we saw the, the stock markets uh, recovering uh, a big move upside. They went from 23,700 and something when we spoke for the first time uh, to close to 26,000 now, a gain of 2,000 points and maybe another thousand is in the cards. So we are close to record high and everything seems good, but I smell something in the state of Denmark. I don't like it. The Fed, you, you, you saw it yourself, some Fed governors became a bit more dovish and the, uh, the market became enthusiastic again and not looking around what it's really happening. It seems to me that they want to lure Joe Sixpack back into the market. What's your opinion? Yes, well, we had this um, big fall in the autumn uh, before Christmas. And then, as you rightly say, it's been a, a, a very good recovery now. Um, and of course, this is, you know, for the perma bulls, I mean, the people are always bullish. You know, the market, everything, whenever it goes down, that's just a correction. It's not uh, a start of a downtrend. So, so people will try to buy it again on every dip. In my view, we are at a critical uh, point r right here in the stock market. The long-term result, whatever happens in the shorter term, will be the same. The, the stock market, medium and longer term, is going to crash uh, and go down by you know, same percentage, let's say, as in 1929. And remember, the world economic situation is a lot worse today than it was in 29. Mm -hmm. so, uh, just to remind people, the Dow Jones fell by 90% in 1929, mm -hmm. uh, between 1929 and 32. And it then took 25 years before it came up to the tw uh, 1929 level again, 25 years. So not an instant recovery. Now, Shorter term, my, my uh, preferred view is that we are seeing uh, or very near a top here. And so this is a correction and the next fall will be violent um, and could start pretty soon. Mm. Um, uh, so that's the, that's the preferred scenario. There is the, the outside scenario that we are going to make new highs. I mean, I, I, uh, I call it the last hooray, and it's not just new, new highs, but that it would last even a few months uh, uh, to make these new highs. That's not my preferred scenario, but it, it is possible. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, as I just uh, outlined, the, the longer term outcome is the same. Uh, markets will crash from there, whatever happens uh, in the shorter term. So investors should be very careful. Um, this is not a market to chase. You're not going to make any money by buying uh, um, near uh, or at a top that has been around for a very, very long time or a bull market that's been around for a very long time. Market is now overvalued, overbought, overloved, um, fueled by massive money printing. It's not a good situation to be in the market in. So people, sh investors should be very careful in stock markets, in my view. I think it's it's also driven by uh, computer buying and traders um, who, uh, they make the market more or less and they try to get the last buck. But it's, I also agree with you. I think it's really not worth it. And while- Well, uh, we know, of course, John, we know, of course, that in the US stock market, depending, you know, um, HFT, high frequency trading, which is automated computer trading, can be as much as 70% of the market. Mm -hmm. So that's no human involvement whatsoever. This is just machines that buy and sell mm -hmm. uh, on signals. Uh, so, so um, and that's, you know, so, so it, the stock market is a casino um, and that casino will go bankrupt at some point in the next few years, in my mm -hmm. view. Absolutely agree. And some, some uh, central banks with a bit more brain, I would call them, they are taking precaution as it looks like, because we just got the interesting information that the central banks of the world all together bought the highest amount of gold since 1971. The total was uh, in 2018, 651 tons. And 
that's pretty impressive. But the gold went to the east and it went to, to Russia, China. As I just said, they seem to be more wise than ours. Or maybe ours uh, wants to, to keep the paper money paradigm for a while longer and risking losing their own reserves while they, they move to Asia and they only want to protect the dollar for a while longer. Yes, well, as, as you rightly said, Jan, um, this buying, as it were, and it was in the uh, by central banks of gold last year, which was up um, significantly. But, you know, they, they almost 50, just under 50% of the buying came from Russia. And, and then uh, most, the rest of it, mainly from uh, the East, um, a little bit from Hungary and other countries. But, you know, you take the Western Central Bank, the US, the Germany, UK, France, or I mean all the European ones. Nobody bought gold. I mean they 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 are they still haven't got a clue uh, what gold is all about and and the value of gold. Uh, and as we know, over the last you know uh, what in the end of the 1900s, 1990s, 80s, and 90s. I mean they reduced the gold holdings dramatically um, and. Countries like the UK and even Switzerland sold most of their holding at the top, at bottom of the market uh, around just before 2000. Um, so the and the East, as you rightly said, continuing to buy. I mean, the, the, whether they buy for central banks or whether they buy for uh, private holdings, because China and, and India are taking most of the world's supply of gold um, every month and every year, and they continue to do so. A lot of that is. In, in private hands, but uh, uh, probably the, the, also the Chinese government has got a lot more gold than they are announcing to the world. So th that the trend is continuing. The, the, the co countries like the US um, uh, and, and uh, many other European countries probably haven't got anywhere near the gold they say they have. They probably leased it to the market or sold it. Um, and uh, this is why they haven't had a proper physical audit of their gold for a long, long time. The U.S., not since the 1950s, um, and no other country in Europe either has an official physical audit of their gold, which means they have something to hide and they probably don't have anywhere near the gold they say they have. So, so the power will go to the east, uh, to China, to Russia, etc., because they understand the meaning of gold and they understand that the dollar will uh, uh, will collapse at some point um, and therefore um, it's extremely important to hold gold not mm. only will the dollar collapse of course eventually also will the euro and most other currencies um, as they continue to print money even i found uh, recently the interesting information published by the world gold gold council that the total gold production 2018 was 3350 tons and of that, uh, 300 tons go to Russia and 400 to China. So that's already a big stake of the production. And during the same time in this 2018, gold went down by $30 or so. I consider this a completely manipulated market. While they are buying like crazy and it must be comfort, as you, as you just said, there, was, uh, there has not been an, an, audio, an audio or a checking for the gold, if there is any gold left, or how much is there left in the federal uh, Fed of New York, which is a big storage, or Fort Knox, so they didn't uh, check this for decades. So, it's, as said, it smells really. So, they probably sold stuff that belongs to others only to, to protect the dollar for a while longer until everything comes down. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. That's sadly what, what, uh, what's, gonna, uh, what's happening. And, and once the paper market um, fails, which it will do, since that there are you know, um, hundreds of times of paper gold in relation to physical, when the paper gold market fail, um, then uh, it will be revealed that these central banks don't have any uh, gold because they have nothing to, to deliver then against these pa paper claims. I think you mentioned 400 um, tons for China. China, yes. I think that, that figure is not quite correct. China buys around 1,000 tons a year of gold uh, in total. Uh, that was that the is domestic production of China that they produce right. in their own country. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. domestic production is 400 mm -hmm. tons. That's correct. And all that production goes straight to the central bank. They don't, that none of that is exported. And, and, and China um, keeps that uh, themselves, the, the whole of their, their own production. Mm. I stumbled also uh, over another very interesting fact that in over 70 uh, world currencies, the gold price has surpassed the historic high. We had the high in 2011 in US dollars, but in other currencies like the um, Australian dollar, Indian rupee, many currencies around the Caribbean. Or, so it's really many currencies. It's uh, already at a new high. And this is proof for me that to protect uh, wealth works for those countries and it will also work in euro terms and in other currencies. Don't you agree? Yes, well, you know, moves normally start uh, you know, in the periphery, which means it starts in, in countries which are smaller or weaker countries. Of course, we've seen a, a continuous move in, in Venezuelan Bolivar says, you know, for the last mm -hmm. 20 years or so, although it's accelerated in the last couple of years. Uh, gold, gold was around 200 Bolivars at the, at, the, at the beginning of the century and is now around 350 million Bolivars. Uh, we've seen not as strong a move, but a similar type of move in Argentina. So these are the you know, badly managed countries economically. But the West is going that way too. And as you rightly said, many of the um, now countries around the world are seeing gold breaking out or even making new highs. Uh, also many, not just to the developing countries with, with weak currencies, but also Western economies. You know, We thought for a long time that Norway was going to be a a strong economy and a, a strong currency. Well, gold in, in Norwegian kroner, and most Norwegians still don't know that because they're not buying any gold. They don't, they don't even see it. But gold in Norwegian kroner has made new highs. Gold in Swedish kroner made new highs. Gold in Australian dollars and Canadian dollars made new highs. So also, in, as I said, Western currencies, we're looking here at gold um, now strengthening uh, dramatically. And also breaking out in, in other currencies. I mean, I wrote an article which is published uh, on your site, I, I think, or will be uh, in the next day or so, about the, uh, the Maginot line, the Mag Maginot, uh, there was the, uh, the French, um, French colonel who was, uh, um, or general, who was in charge of the, um, or of the attack uh, or, 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 or protecting France against Germany. Uh, in the Second World War, and that was a very critical line that they built there. And then the, I see gold as now in dollars also at a very critical line, and, and which is around the 350, 360 level. And um, I believe that that line is going to be broken very soon. Uh, we are we we went up uh, in the last couple of days a bit, come down now today, but that's nothing. That's short term. The trend is up, the gold has broken out, and gold is going to make new high in all currencies. Um, and the dollar high of 1920 from 2011 is likely to be, uh, to be broken probably even this year. Hmm. I guess so too. Uh, and we found another very good uh, argument for a bullish case uh, for the gold price. Um, as a, co a correlation between the U.S. state debt and the and the uh, gold price, we see it here. Um, this graphic is from the uh, Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, starting below uh, before 1970, and we see when the gold price made its peak in 1980 at 850, there was a big gap between the US debt, which was very low back then. Um, and then we had a 20 year bear market where it slowly went down. So for, for investors in gold who consider this a speculation that was absolutely destroying, wealth destroying, and it went from a big overvaluation in, in relation to the uh, US stepped from a big overvaluation to a large undervaluation at the um, double bottom in uh, 99 and uh, 2001. And then it took off. We see the US stepped 
is becoming steeper and steeper and it, it rising faster and faster and gold catch up with it. Connect. And I think that we see now a real chance that a big move is in the car. But it's, we're up to 22 trillion now. Uh, the, uh, also what is interesting is that on average, debt in the US has doubled every eight years since 1981 every eight years. According to my forecast, if the doubling continues, which is very likely by 1928, whether Trump is president or not, uh, uh, because we don't know if he's going to get a second term, uh, but with 1928, we will have a 40 trillion, or the US will have a 40 trillion debt. All clearly um, reflects the destruction of paper money. Um, and right now, gold has not been keeping up uh, with the rise in debt uh, since 2011, when we made that peak, as we, that was, you know, as we discussed, um, just a temp. We have seen a temporary correction uh, since 2011, uh, and in my view, that is finished now. And uh, gold will catch up with that line, which is now at 22 trillion, but which will probably grow exponentially from here. And, and as I said, within within uh, with well, before 28, it will be. 40 trillion, which means that gold will go a lot higher than today. Um, and Egon, there is another very good argument that uh, speaks for buying gold right now. And you use this in your uh, latest article. It's the gold price measured to the fiat money quantity. Could you explain this to our audience? Yes, absolutely. If we can have a look at the graph, um, I will explain. Yeah. Here we see gold um, uh, measured against uh, the fiat money uh, or the money supply in the US. This is the quantity of money in circulation, uh, which includes credit and, and money printed and cash. Um, and what we see at the bottom here in 1970 and 2000, that, that means that gold relative to the money uh, supply is very low. And if you want to make money on investments, you buy them when they're, when they're unloved and undervalued, i.e. at the low value. And that, that means that in 1970, when gold was $35 an ounce, um, uh, and in 2000, when it was 250 or to $300 an ounce, but that gold was as undervalued then as it is today, because if you look at the graph on the far right uh, today, 2019, gold is at the same level uh, in relation to money. So, so buying gold today, you're buying at the same uh, va valuation as when it was $35 in 1970 and $250 in, in, in 2000. Hmm. That means that gold today is dramatically undervalued um, and uh, the, that is the time to acquire gold if you don't already own it. But of course, the way we look at gold is not a question of, of an investment. We look at, as, look at it as insurance and wealth preservation. Um, and so here you can buy insurance against a rotten world uh, and uh, overvalued markets. You can buy insurance in the form of gold at, at an extremely low price, you know, you pay a premium, which, which is, is the lowest you can ever find in the market for a premium that will protect your assets from the coming fall in, in all the other bu bubble assets, uh, which is stocks, bonds, property market. Mm -hmm. So this is unique opportunity, both from an investment point of view and from a wealth preservation point of view, mm -hmm. buying insurance at these levels. Let this be your last words. We, I'm sure you're right. I'm a gold bug for all the time, but we also know once this, this works out, the circumstances will not be pleasurable. Um, let's hope that our audience is taking action and gets into the market until it's still low. Carpe diem. Thank you, Egon, for this time and till next time. Yes, thank you, Jan. Uh, you know, you're, you're right. 
when gold goes up, the world will be uh, a, a, a less good place to live in, uh, sadly, because that will involve a lot of problems. But at least uh, if you have some gold, you will have some fi a financial insurance, uh, although it's not going to protect you against all the risks in the world, but at least you're protected financially. Yes. Thank you, Jan. Pleasure to talk to you. Thanks, Egon. Till next time.